worse about that than her. Not as much as explaining it to his wife. <laughs> what the hell? You really did a number on her. Elena Brevet, 27, owns Brevet Investments with her husband. 17 deep incisions to her torso and breasts pre-mortem. Looks like a sexual sadist. Time of death? She's in full rigor. He was turned down over the weekend, so I'd say no less than 48 hours. That fits the witness statements. The victim was last seen Friday night. By who? By her secretary, Patty Kerner. You got any surveillance here? The cameras are downstairs in the lobby, none on this floor. Munch is looking at the tapes right now. Detective Benson and Stable are going to talk to you. What kind of investments did your boss manage? A private hedge fund, 700 million in assets. How's business? Last year they posted 20% returns. 140 million profit, pretty impressive. Is this the husband? Jason, real style section couple. Okay, tell us about Friday night. Um, Elena was supposed to go to Miami for a client's party, but she had to finish the quarterly report, so Jason flew without her on the six o'clock. What time did you leave? Around eight. She was still working, so I, I offered to stay, but she told me to go home. Her husband's still in Miami? Let me check. He was booked to come back last night. Oh, God. Jason doesn't know. We'll take care of that. There's no missing person report on Elena Brevet. Strange that the husband wouldn't file one. The marriage isn't so perfect. Mr. Brevet, police. Luggage is here. Hello? Anybody home? Good. Mr. Brevet. Tortured like his wife. Field tested the blood around the chair. Same type as the victim. Our perp leave anything behind? No prints. Here or at the office. The killer knows forensics. The whole place was wiped clean with bleach. He was just as careful with the body. I haven't found any trace evidence. Who was killed first, Jason or Elena? Elena. Uh, Jason's been dead only about 12 hours. Well, his plane got in from Miami at 10 last night. Same cause of death? Yes, his throat was cut. There's also trauma to the back of his head. So Jason comes home, the perp blitzes him, drags him to the chair, tapes him up. Monogram keychain EB, Elena Brevet. Bastard took her keys to let himself in. The guy waited all weekend for Jason to come home? He tortured the both of them. He had to be looking for something. Not just any safe. The Yates 6000. Totally pick proof. He tortured Jason for the combination and cleaned him out. I'm hoping the gas chromatograph might tell us what was in there. How do you test for what's gone? New technology. Every chemical or organic compound has a unique olfactory profile. That's the signature. Drugs? No. The smell of money. Well, specifically the dye and the ink. From the concentration of the sample, had to be a few cubic feet of cash. Even in small bills, there's got to be at least a million bucks. The Brevets are financial managers. Now, why not invest the cash? Money in a safe doesn't earn interest. Maybe they were hiding it from the IRS. Or they're creditors. I got the Brevets' financials. Both houses, mortgage to the hilt, credit card debt in six figures. Maybe living large, they got in over their heads. Why not pay off their bills with all that cash? Because they'd have to explain where they got it. And had the forensic accountants go over their books, Brevet Investments is nothing but a high-end pyramid scheme. So all those huge profits were phony? Yeah, they take the money from one client, pay another's dividends, take the rest for themselves. And one of their investors got pissed off bad enough to kill him. Yeah, the kind you don't want to piss off in Cali and Bogota. They're laundering drug money? Yeah, and skimming it, too. For one client in particular, a shell company out of Colombia called Casa Vega Enterprises. Drug lord finds out somebody's been ripping him off, he'd have to hit him quick to set an example. Check with narcotics, see if Casa Vega rings any bells. We got a guy over there we can trust. Any idea on who's making the deposits? Well, the forensic accountant gave us this list. From cocaine to dirty cash to clean checks, you launder it through Wall Street, wire it back to Bogota. Capitalism at its best. Now, this is a name I know. Elvira Castilla, Jackson Heights. I call it her son for selling weed at the family bodega. There's this man. He's well-respected in his community. Nice wife and kid. He came to me, said he had a cousin, wanted to invest some money, but he was illegal. So he asked you to write a check to Brevet Investments? For $450. He gave me back 500 cash. So 50 buck profit for you. How many times did you do this favor for the cousin? I wrote 15, maybe 20 checks. That's all I know. Give us a name. Senor Montoya! Policia! Mr. Montoya, police! Dead. But not for long. The bodies are still warm. In here. Now 
Master kills a kid, doesn't even have the balls to look at him. Oh my god. Call for a bus. Faster if we take him in. Ballistics results from the Montoya homicides. Take a look. On the left, the bullet taken from Mrs. Montoya. Three twists and a left groove. On the right, the slug taken from Mr. Montoya. The same gun, it makes sense that they're identical. And now look at this. It was a perfect match. Same triple twist, is that the bullet from Antonio's bed? No, from an unsolved homicide. What case? Murder of Alexandra Cavett. Who's that? Our old ADA. He left zero forensic evidence at the Brevet and Montoya homicide. Our best lead is the security footage from Brevet Investments. We've excluded over 200 employees, messengers, and janitorial staff. We've got about 75 subjects left to identify. Now, we've got a lot of names. All the employees at Brevet, everybody involved in the money laundering scheme, somebody has got to connect back to the cartel. DEA can help us out with that. Their hiding computers are programmed to find links between cases. Good. Get over to Haida. Run every name we got. Yes, sir. Christine Torres, First Street, Brooklyn, New York, sold checks to Montoya. Uh, owns a laundromat. Two kids, Calvin and Jose, born in Puerto Rico. No Colombian connections, no links to any of your other names. Next. That's all we got. This guy really is a ghost. What did you say? Our kid witness said a ghost killed his parents. You say it in Spanish, el fantasma. Why, does that mean something to you? El fantasma, the ghost, contract killer. Names come up in dozens of assassinations in Colombia. What do you know about him? Real name's Liam Connors, born in Belfast. IRA hitman, did some time in the maze. Disappeared from Northern Ireland about five years ago, resurfaced in Bogota. Well, what's an Irish guy doing in Colombia? Since the ceasefire in Northern Ireland, a lot of out-of-work IRA guys are down there training narco-terrorist groups, helping them combat U.S. anti-drug activity. But why is Connors called the ghost? Because he walks through walls to get his targets. No one sees him coming. No one's left alive to see him leave. Except our kid. rent a car parked in a loading zone outside Brevet Investments got a parking ticket late Friday night. Liam Connors rented the car? No, it's a Bronx guy by the name of Doyle Shanahan. Fundraises for the IRA in bars around New York. Where can we find him? He works in a warehouse downtown. I raise money for Sinn Féin, a legitimate political party fighting for peace in Ireland. And how does shooting an eight-year-old in the head bring peace? Along with five others. Connors killed them all. Liam Connors doesn't work for your people anymore. He's a contract killer for the cartels. I didn't know. I swear. Hit it. <clears throat> go, 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 go! Get the car! You'll die in a week. Thank you. 
I'm unarmed. 